hello again to my dart throwing brothers and sisters. Thank you for coming back again to watch the third video in the, my series. And today we're going to be talking about practice. If you've watched the other two videos, you know that I've talked extensively about the need to practice because the rule is the more you throw, the better you're going to throw. It's there's no way around it. You have to throw a lot if you want to get good. That means practice. And practice can be a real bummer if you are just throwing at the bullseye over and over and over again. You're going to get tired of doing that. You're not going to want to do it, which means you're not going to do it. And if you do, it's going to be painful and that's not a good environment to throw in. So. I've put together a set of guidelines for what good practice requires, what you need to have a good practice routine. Here it is. First of all, it's got to be fun. If it's not fun, you're not going to do it, okay? You've got to be somewhat excited about going to practice, and that's a hard thing to do. Like I said, if you're throwing at the bullseye, over and over and over again, you're going to get tired. It's not going to be fun. Secondly, it's got to be easy. And this is maybe this is applicable to me more than other people, but I'm a lazy person to start with. And if I got to do things that, that uh, take away from having fun and th throwing darts, then I'm get, it's going to be less appealing to me. And for me, that is keeping score. I don't enjoy keeping score. Uh, so, if it, the ideal practice routine for me will involve minimum score keeping. Okay, but at the same time, a practice routine has to let me monitor how well I'm doing. Am I getting better? Am I getting worse? Am I staying the same? That means that there has to be scoring of some kind. And uh, finally, if you're going to really practice well and maximize the efficiency of your time, you need to play a game or practice such that you're rewarding accuracy, that the better, the more accurately you make your throw, uh, the more you're rewarded. Um, so, given those guidelines, I've come up with a modification to the game of cricket. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time telling you about cricket. Uh, if you throw darts much at, at all, you know how to play cricket. If you don't, look it up on YouTube. There's many, many videos on how to play cricket. It's a great game, uh, but it doesn't meet the guidelines for excellent practice. So I don't like playing cricket by myself. So I have made modifications to the game of cricket and create come up, I've come up with a new game that I call Dicket. And it meets all the qualifications for the good practice routine that I was talking about. First of all, it's fun. It's, uh, you can play it with other people, you can play it alone, and it's a fun game to play. Secondly, it is super easy to play. It requires the absolute minimum of scoring. Effort. Okay, you're still keeping score, but you're expending the minimum amount of effort on scoring. But at the same time, you are monitoring how well you're playing you, you will know by the score if you're getting better or worse or staying the same, and you will do that very accurately. And finally, in the game of Dicket, you are only rewarded for accuracy. 
There is no slop in this game. If you make the throw that you're aiming at, you are rewarded. If you miss it, you're not. So uh, that's why I love this game. I'm excited to introduce it to you. I, I'm confident you'll love it too. So without further ado, let's start with the rules of Dickett. Just like in cricket, you need to close out each wedge between 15 and 20 by scoring three of each number. You can do this with a triple, a double, and at least another single, or with three singles of each number, just like in cricket. But in Dickett, you don't get to carry over scores from one round to the next. That is, you must close out a number with one turn of three darts. So in cricket, you keep score by making a single slash mark for each time you score an open number and close out that number with the third dart resulting in the circle. In Dicket, the only time you would mark a score is when you score three in a single round. There is no carryover of partial scores in Dicket. Notice I did not mention the bowl, an important part of cricket play. We'll address that in a minute. Another change from cricket rules is that in Dicket, you are rewarded by scoring two darts in an open number. The reward is you get to throw another round. As an example, this throw of two darts in 20, an open wedge, and one in one means you do not score, but you get to throw again. If you're playing against someone else, this means you don't relinquish your turn to your opponent. If you are practicing by yourself, this means you do not charge yourself with a miss. More on scoring when practicing by yourself in a minute. In the event you throw your three darts and only get one dart in an open wedge or zero darts in an open wedge, you do not score and you lose your turn to your opponent. So in this example, my attempt to score 17 results in no score on the board and my opponent gets to throw. Now about the bowl. In Dicket, you only have to get one dart in either the bowl or the bullseye while in cricket, you have to get three scores, just like any other number. But in Dicket, you have to score a bowl or a bullseye before you can close out any of the other numbers. In other words, Dicket games always start with bowl or bullseye as the target. If you miss with all three of your darts, you lose your turn to your opponent. When you do get a bull or bullseye, you then move on to try and close out the 15 through the 20. In this example, I close out the bull with my first dart. Then I use my last two darts to try and close out 19. The only way this will happen is with a double 19 and a single 19 or a triple 19. I miss these options, but I still keep my turn because, because I closed out the bowl. Any time I close out a number or a bowl and dick it, I get a Once you hit the bowl and are targeting 15 through 20, you can close them out in any order. Now that you understand how to play dick it with an opponent, let's move on to how to play dick it by yourself for practice purposes. All the same rules apply, except, of course, you cannot lose your turn when playing yourself. Instead, when you make a throw that would cost you your turn in a match, you mark a score. This means an ideal score of closing out the bowl and all the wedges of 15 through 20 would be zero. Every time you do not score zero or one dart in the wedge you are targeting, you mark a score against yourself. How do you do this? With a counter. You can get a mechanical counter for cheap 
or you can get an app for your phone for free. If you always close out the numbers in the same order, you don't have to keep score on the chalkboard. Instead, you will know which number you were targeting as you go through your regular order of numbers and will only need to keep score on your counter. For me, this order is always 19, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 20. Why? Because it is comfor comfortable for me. You may decide on 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, and 15 or reverse that order. The order doesn't matter as long as you always close out numbers in that order. Essentially, this eliminates scorekeeping on the chalkboard and only requires you keep count of your misses on your counter. And still, you will be able to gauge your progress without having to pick up a piece of chalk. Let's play a demonstration game. First, I have to get a bowl or a bullseye. I do with the first dart and move on to my first number, 19. The only thing that will matter now is scoring three 19s because I've already guaranteed myself another turn because I closed out the bowl. I miss with my 19 attempts. Now I target 19. I want a triple 19, but a double 19 will assure another turn. A single 19 will get me closer to closing the 19 within this turn. Anything but a 19 is a wasted dart. And I close out 19 with my first dart by scoring a triple 19. I use my next two darts to try and close out 15 and miss by a mile. I have closed out the bowl and the 19 and have not had to score a point on my count. I score two hits on my 15 attempt, which means I get to throw again. With the first dart of this turn, I hit the triple 15 and use my last two darts to try and close out 16. I miss with both darts. On 16, I score 2 and earn another turn. With the last dart of this turn, I get another triple. On to 17. On 17, I only get one dart in my target. I would now lose my turn if I was playing someone else, but playing solo, I must score a point on my counter. On my second try at 17, I score a triple with my last dart and close out 17. I land all three darts in the 18 and close it out. With my first try at 20, I miss with the first dart, but hit singles with the next two, thereby maintaining my turn. Then I miss with the first two darts, but score double with my last dart, earning another turn. On my third attempt at 20, I only score a single with my three darts, 
and must mark a score on my counter. With my next attempt, I score a single followed by a triple, which closes out all numbers. My score is a 2, a very good score for me in Dicket. I hope I haven't confused you too badly with these rules about how to play Dicket. I think if you try it, you'll figure it out pretty quickly. And once again, as far as a practice game, it meets the four criteria that I've defined for myself. It's fun. I enjoy playing it. It's easy. It has the absolute minimum amount of scoring using the counter. Uh, the, you still have performance gauge with that counter. You can monitor if you're doing well or not well. And this game rewards accuracy. It's not like cricket where you're aiming at the 15 and you accidentally hit 17 and you get rewarded for it. In Dicket, if you miss the target you're aiming at, you don't get a reward. I'm going to put a website up at the end of this video that will show you the rules that you can print off on your printer and I advise you to do that. I think it'll answer any questions that you'll have as you play the game. But if you do have questions, feel free to post those in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. And thanks again for watching this video.